and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's time for our Game Week 30 episode of the 100 Experts. I've been very excited to get back with this content and guys, we're going to be finding out all about captaincy, transfers and a little bit of chip strategy as well in this video to see what our experts are doing. So guys, if you enjoy this one, make sure you drop a like, let's shoot for 1000 likes and subscribe if you're new around here too. First of all, a massive thank you to our 100 experts who have helped us out with their data this week, answering the questions that we put forth to them to hopefully find out some answers of where we should be taking our FPL team. So we've got some really good and concise answers today that will give us a real clear indication of what to do going forward with our FPL team. So let's see what they're up to. So of our 100 experts, 44 are making one transfer this week. Two transfers? Well, 27 of our experts are doing that. So this is a week where many of our experts are making multiple transfers with three, making three as well. So lots of transfers going on here. But it's also a very big week for the wildcard. I believe this is the biggest week we've seen for the second wildcard like so far in the second half of the season where you have access to that second wildcard. This is the most we've seen it be used in one individual game week with nine team so quite a significant number there and not too many people rolling their transfer just seven of our experts not making a transfer this week which means it is another one of those weeks where it's time to make some big changes to our FPL team and if you fancy a wild card well you're in good company because 19 of our experts are doing just that of course we did upload a wild card video a couple of days ago so if you are interested in what the kind of wild card draft you might be looking to go for might look like I do recommend you go check out that video but for now we need to see in more detail what our experts are up to but before we do that, a quick look at some of the numbers from around the overall player base. So looking at the most popular Game Week 30 transfers in the world among every uh, FBL manager in the entire game, we have seen that Salah has some significant interest with almost 400,000 FBL managers bringing the Liverpool man into their squad right now. That is pretty darn huge. That really, really is, really is a big, big number there so far, considering we're still a few days off the, uh, off the deadline and we've got this big number already. Cole Palmer is coming in here at second, just over 200,000 transfers in for him, so very, very popular. Muniz, with his good form recently, is also seeing some significant numbers, as well as Son and Gusto over the 100,000 mark. Outside of that, we've got a few other players here and there, but what I'm more, most interested in is, do our experts agree? Do our experts also think these are the players to go for? And at the top end of this table, yes, definitely. Salah, Palmer, Muniz and Gusto. These four players are also seeing a lot of popularity among our experts. However, outside of that, there's really not too much interest. And there's certain players on this list that are not only being, well, just completely ignored by our experts, but also actively being sold. Haaland, Robinson, Foden, White and Solanke are not being transferred in by any of our experts. Of course, we cannot account for those on a wild card or for this particular stats, I guess, but certainly we are looking at a lot of our experts already own Holland or have sold him recently, not looking to bring him back for this Arsenal game. I think in general, if you don't own Holland right now, you could probably wait one more game week before bringing him into your FPL team. Robinson, also no interest in him whatsoever. I think he's a little bit of a short term pick, really. And our experts often like to take a longer view of things, particularly when going for those cheaper defenders that they don't want to waste transfers constantly switching in and out of their team. Phil Foden is being sold, which we're going to see in just a, a moment. Yeah, experts don't want to bring him, him in. They want to sell him ahead of this difficult game against Arsenal. No one's going for Ben White. He plays against Man City. Again, a bad time to jump on White. And interestingly, no transfers in for Solanke at all either. I have a suspicion he's in a few wildcard teams, however. But in terms of those general transfers, Solanke, no one's bringing him in. I think a lot of our experts do own him already, to be fair. Particularly those who free hit it last week. So we will see, um, we will see a few uh, Solankes in various experts expert squads, but not really a player people are looking to transfer in now necessarily. Not a top priority. Outside of that, we've got Son. Most of our experts already own Son, so uh, not too many transfers in for him. And Van Dijk and Darwin. Interestingly, no one really, uh, no big trends building around these players. Each of Van Dijk and Darwin only seeing one or two transfers each for these players. So uh, yeah, not too many. So I said about Foden being sold. So let's see who else is being sold by our experts. Well, at the top of the list, it's Jared Bowen. A lot of people brought in Jared Bowen to try and cover Game Week 29 with Bowen's fixture against Aston Villa. And now that that fixture is in the past, despite Bowen not having two bad fixtures in the near future, he is a player that is pretty easy to sacrifice when we look at all of the great midfield options elsewhere. So Bowen is the number one most transferred out player among our experts, with 32 of our transfer making experts removing Bowen this game week. That is a big number and he will be, therefore, the standout player 
to sell if you have him in your team right now. Outside of that, Saka is really, really interesting. Now, Saka is a player pretty much all of our experts own at this point, uh, at least 90%, maybe 95%, uh, really a significantly owned player. So even though nine transfers out seems like a lot, I mean, he's the second most transferred out player on this list, it's still a player who is being kept by the majority of our FBL experts. And what I should say is that Saka is being sold consistently to fund another particular transfer that we're going to talk about in a moment. Outside of that, Bailey is being sold, you know, another player who was bought in for Game Week 29, but not necessarily a player you want to own long term. Foden, again, another cash cow player with a difficult fixture. This game week is being sold to free up money. And outside of that, what we mostly see for the rest of this list, and it's not everyone, but mostly we see players that were uh, either owned or bought in for Game Week 29, and now we're readjusting to this post Game Week 29 world. Those players are now being removed. We're seeing players like Douglas Luiz, Alanga, Doughty, Kudus, Morris, Region. All of these players being removed by our experts as we look to move beyond Game Week 29 and actually get some better players in that, you know, there's no more blanks other than Spurs in Game Week 34. So we don't need to worry about having those, you know, players from a limited, limited amount of teams that we wouldn't necessarily pick if it wasn't for Game Week 29 being really so small. So a lot of those players being removed now, and that's what we're seeing pretty consistently. And what is really interesting about our transfers out this game week is that there's 14 of them showing trends. So actually, there's a real diversity of players being removed by our FPL experts. Outside of Bowen, who seems to be a real popular transfer out, there just is so many different players you could potentially remove. And that's going to be all about what budget you have, who you lo are looking to target, which players of these players you actually already have in your team. And therefore, that is going to kind of make the decision of which ones you might think about removing right now, if not just wildcarding them all out as 19 of our managers are doing. So with that said, let's look at who is being transferred out to be replacing these guys. So it's, it's Salah week, basically, guys. 58 transfers in for him out of our 84 transfer-making uh, managers. We're also seeing him in all of the wildcard drafts I've seen among our experts as well. So that means Salah is, you know, the new essential player to own. Obviously, he has been out injured or, you know, on international break or, you know, not having fixtures, having a couple of blank game weeks recently. And that has kind of led to Salah uh, being sold by a lot of people over the past couple of months. However, it is time things change. Salah is such an important and crucial FPL asset who is basically, you know, he kind of is synonymous with FPL. Like, he is such that, he's just that FPL guy. And now that he is back, going to be in the Liverpool squad, going to be starting against Brighton this game week, we now know that it's time to bring Salah back. And that's why we're seeing such a huge trend among our experts to bring this man back. Get the Egyptian back in your team. He is your number one transfer target, according to our experts. But I kind of agree with that one there. In second place, Cole Palmer with 22 transfers in for him. I know many of you would have managed to have held on to Palmer over the last few game weeks. However, if you did sell him recently, now is the time to bring him back. 22 transfers in for him as well, which is quite significant numbers considering how many people actually already own Palmer. A new player being added to the hype list is Gusto. The Chelsea right back has been in pretty good form recently with good attacking threat and we know Chelsea have two double game weeks later on in the season. So particularly if you are planning to free hit in game week 34, well, Palmer and Gusto are going to be really, really crucial players to bring in. You can free hit them out in that difficult game week 34 fixture against Arsenal. And outside of that, Chelsea either have great fixtures, for example, Burnley this week, or they have double game weeks, which we will see at the end of this season. So nice long-term holds, long-term buys, and players you can kind of set and forget in your team to a big degree. We've got Muniz with four transfers in for him. That's, uh, that's a little bit as a little bit, but uh, nothing too significant considering how hyped he is outside of the experts. And we've got Isaac and Son with two transfers in for each of those guys as well. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a trend, but nothing too strong on Isaac and Son. I would say that these guys are perhaps more wild card players to bring in. If you don't have these guys already, you might not be looking to prioritize those as transfers. More Salah, Palmer, Gusto. These are kind of the players we're looking at most of all. So based on that, we can suggest to buy Salah. Very, very easy there. And the most popular players being sold for Salah are Bowen, Saka, and Bailey. If you can afford to do Bowen to Salah, I think it is a slam dunk, easy move to make. Just go for it. If you have Saka, and he's the only way you can get to Salah, it's the only way, you know, if you really are desperate for money, you don't have any money in your bank, you need to make some downgrades somewhere in your team. Maybe you need to make two transfers to make this happen. Remember, a lot of our experts are making multiple transfers this week to try 
and free up some funds in order to afford Salah, well, maybe Saka is going to be a slightly easier route to do that. And if you can afford to do Bailey to Salah, hey, I don't know how much money you got in your bank, but it's definitely another transfer that some of our experts are making alongside a downgrade elsewhere in their team, be that in the defensive positions, maybe downgrading a Trippier or someone like that, or, you know, downgrading a forward, selling an Ollie Watkins or a Tony or someone like that, down to, you know, a Muniz, for example, in order to free up the funds to do Bailey to Salah. I understand that's going to be a lot more difficult for many people though but the key really here is try and find a way to get Salah into your team it's going to be different depending on who you are what your team looks like right now ideally you would sell a player who you don't necessarily want to own long term like a Bowen or a Bailey but if you do have to sacrifice a Saka I think that's fine too another pl a couple of players that you could consider selling for Salah are the likes of De Bruyne if you have him in your team Douglas Luiz if you can afford to make that upgrade as well but yeah whatever the case um, try not to sell Saka if possible but if that's the only way that's the way to get Salah. You must get Salah. <laughs> Cole Palmer is also another popular transfer in. So if you want to make a double midfield switch, for example, you know, if you need to do a Bowen and a De Bruyne to a Salah and Palmer, for example, I think that works really, really well. If you've got a He Chan, you can move to Palmer. You know, that's a possibility as well. Uh, if you can't afford to go for Salah, you know, maybe you want to hold off Salah for one more week or something like that, then you can take some other routes as well and just bring in Palmer instead. He Chan to Palmer, like I said, Douglas Louise, Bailey to Palmer. These kind of moves are all definitely valid. Outside of the midfielders though Doughty to Gusto seems like a pretty sensible move with Luton Town with some horrible fixtures coming up and we expect them to concede a few goals Gusto are on the opposite end with some great fixtures Morris is the most popular transfer out among forwards and Muniz is the most popular transfer in among forwards so maybe a Morris to Muniz switch is something a little bit more simple or maybe if you just need to free up a tiny bit of budget to afford Salah maybe a Morris to Muniz might be uh, might be the way to do that for Muniz's nice fixture this week against Sheffield United for Captain C, it is, uh, well, we've, we've got a, we've got Salah back. <laughs> we've got Salah back at the top of this list. It seems like it's been a while since Salah has been the popular captain pick of the week. Prior to uh, the last couple of game weeks, we've seen Haaland a lot. But obviously, he's had blanks. He's had injuries as well. And uh, yeah, it seems to be like before Christmas, before anyone was talking about captaining Salah. But he is back on the menu for our captains. With 59%, he is our expert's favorite captain for this game week. So get Salah in and think about captaining him as well. However, he is not the only player on the menu with Son with a pretty healthy 30% for his game against Luton Town. So 30% is nothing to be ignored. That is a significant trend. And even though you would say Son is a slight differential versus Salah, I don't think Son is like a not obvious choice. I think he is a pretty obvious choice. I think Salah and Son will dominate the captaincy numbers this game week. If you do want to go a bit more differential, Cole Palmer would be the way to go. So Palmer plays against Burnley at home this week. We will notice that he is another player who takes penalties. All four of these players take penalties. And, uh, you know, it's, it's possibly one of the better fixtures for this game week. You maybe say Son versus Luton is, is pretty nice as well. But certainly Palmer at home against Burnley is, uh, is really, really nice. If you can manage to ignore the fact that Palmer is a cheap player. He's not a, you know, he's not those, those big premium players necessarily. But he's still been super, super effective as an FPL asset. Will you uh, consider captaining him against Burnley though? I don't know. You'll have to let me know. And Haaland is always going to be on this list no matter who he plays. Even in this very, very tough game against Arsenal, we're still seeing 2% of our experts opting to go for him as their captain. But really, guys, it seems like this week it's all about Salah and Son or maybe Palmer at a stretch. Haaland at 2% is not really enough of a trend for me to consider him. But those top three players there, those are our real captain options this week. So I'll be really interested. Do you think that these are the right captains? Which one of these three will you be going for? And if you're not going for Salah, Son and Palmer, let me know who you are going for. Is there anyone else worth considering that maybe our experts are missing out? Muniz, for example. Anyone captaining Muniz against Sheffield United? I don't know. Maybe worth considering, considering his form, if you don't mind the price tag. You know, it doesn't matter. It's about FPL points at the end of the day, not how much a player costs. So those are our captains. Let me know what you guys are going for, for your captain as well. And let's move on to our final and bonus question for today's video. 
So today I kept things very, very simple for our experts and simply asked them when they will be using their bench boost. When will they be using that that big chip? That big chip that so many of us are talking about right now. Because I kind of saw a bit of a trend when I was kind of making some chip strategy videos this week. A lot of the comments were saying, well, I mean, I'm not going to bench boost in 37. I personally thought, okay, Game Week 37 seems like the obvious bench boost week. But a lot of people, there was a lot of pushback and a lot of strong opinions saying, well, actually, no, I think Game Week 34 is the week to bench boost. You know, it's not 37 at all, it's 34. So I wanted to see what do our experts think of this? And bear in mind, guys, this is not me trying to convince you of anything. If you've already identified a certain game week that you would like to use your bench boost on and that strategy is right for you, then, you know, you need to go for that. You need to play your own game and you need to play your own strategy. But for those of you guys who are maybe a little bit more on the fence, you're not really sure when to play that bench boost and when to set up your team for the bench boost. A lot of people are kind of wondering, you know, should we free hit in 34 and bench boost in 37, for example? Which which game week should we be prepping for in order to play our bench boost? Because remember, a bench boost, it takes a little while to prep. You've got to make those transfers, whether that's using a wild card prior to game week 37, for example, or if you just need to... I don't know, use a free hit in a different area in order to facilitate that game week 37 uh, bench boost. You know, it's going to take some planning. So in general, it looks like we have an extraordinary trend towards our experts bench boosting in game week 37. Now, that's not to say that all of them are doing it because six are planning a game week 34 bench boost. So there is still numbers. There is still numbers bench boosting in 34. So let's not write off that strategy uh, completely. But game week 37 is, you know, Looking out there, just kind of try and find the data from, you know, the, the FPL managers who know what they're doing. They seem to be favoring that Game Week 37 bench boost. It's not going to be right for everyone, but it's going to be a right for a lot of you. And I think you need to consider that. If it's right for you, go for it. If it's not, fair enough. You know, there's more than one way of playing FPL as proven by our eight FPL experts who have already used their bench boost. Yes, there's no right answers in FPL and I was really, really interested to see so many of our experts have actually already used this chip at some point uh, previously in the season. It's always nice to get a kind of a catch up on this because uh, as someone who owns their bench boost, you know, has their bench boost ready to go, I wonder how many bench boosters to actually have like kind of the jump on the advantage on and that's how many guys about eight percent of the top fpl managers will have already used their bench boost and that that eight percent you have the jump on if you do still have your bench boost in your back pocket but there we go guys don't want to go any further than that not going to tell you what the right or wrong answer is all i can put to you right now is that game week 37 seems to be the popular game week to bench boost it's not the only answer but it is the popular answer so there we go and that's it for our uh, 100 experts video this game week. If you did enjoy this one and found it useful, make sure you do drop a like. Do subscribe if you are new around here as well. I absolutely love this video and I hope you guys do as well. And make sure you leave a comment letting me know who you're going to be captaining this week. And any more discussion around chip strategy and bench boost, I welcome it in the comments. I love to hear your points of view. But aside from that, guys, make sure you check out another video. And until then, I will see you later, mate. Bye-bye.